Hello and welcome to Auto Shenanigans. My name is John. How the devil are you? Have you had a good week? Before we begin today's episode, a little bit of a thank you is in order. The channel has now passed 500 subscribers and I'm sure you know that's quite a significant milestone for anybody new to YouTube such as myself. I have you guys to thank for that. I really do appreciate the support and the watch time, the likes, the comments, subscribes and everything else. It really does mean a lot to me and I think it's great that we're able to share these pointless automotive related videos together. Together. With that out of the way, let's get stuck into today's episode of Forgotten Racetracks. We've come to Cambridgeshire to look at a racetrack that you most likely never knew existed, Granston Lodge. Like many early racetracks in England, Granston Lodge started its life as an RAF airfield. A lot of old racetracks were born out of airfields, and if you're wondering why, that's because during 1939 to 1945, there was a slight disagreement known as World War II. It was during this time that airfields were built quickly and by the dozen to ensure victory against enemy forces, particularly across the eastern parts of the country where response times could be kept to a minimum. When this small disagreement had all blown over, there was a surplus of airfields throughout the country, and with road racing banned, motorsport enthusiasts saw them as the ideal ideal venues to host race events. It was in 1942 that Granston Lodge opened as a bomber command station, sporting the usual A-configuration concrete runways required for the larger aircraft of that type. They worked on top secret missions related to radar and were involved in the development and testing of this vital technology sometimes even flying over to Germany to test the capabilities of the enemy radar systems. It seems every airfield that we visited in the series has a unique story to tell of its own, and that's before we even get into the racing side of things. Racing began on site in 1946, and that's significant because it was the first race meeting held at any venue across the country following World War II. Organised by the Cambridge University Automobile Club, the event consisted of 12 races. There were some doubts as to the suitability of using an old runway for a racetrack, and when the event came around, the weather took a turn for the worst. Despite the odds being against them, the event was a great success and another planned for the following year. In July 1947, the second race event was held, and the crowds of 15,000 people swarmed Granston Lodge to watch the array of cars that were racing. Different categories of racing would have meant that you'd have seen a variety of cars on track, from Vauxhalls to Bentleys and Bugattis. Yet, despite the success of this event and the previous one in 1946, after these two events, racing didn't return to Granston Lodge. The reasons for this are unclear. Perhaps the landowner had other ideas, or maybe, like we've seen in previous episodes, funding was required to bring the track up to a certain standard, but with no willing investors. Or maybe it was just seen as a one or two time only event. I guess we'll never know. As for what remains today, well, the RAF held on to the site until 1955. Not a lot happened, and then in 1990, Cambridgeshire Gliding Club took over. At some point between then and now, a lot of the main runways and perimeter roads have been grassed over and return to nature or farmland. There's the odd abandoned building dotted around to remind you of its wartime days and remarkably the control tower is still in situ. As for the racetrack, well, we can still trace the original circuit, but there are actually two. In 1946, the first circuit layout comprised of the main runway and some of the eastern perimeter roads. It was around 2.13 miles long. Unusually, the start and finish lines on the circuit were in different places. I've no idea how that was supposed to work, but it did. In 1947, they had a little bit of a switcheroo and used the western perimeter roads instead, making up a 2.23 mile circuit where the cars would run in the opposite direction. It was quite a similar circuit using the main runway and the perimeter roads like they had done in the previous year. The main runway has long since gone to be replaced with grass and that's the case for some of the western perimeter roads as well. So whilst it's not possible to drive a lap of this circuit, we're going to explore on foot and hopefully get a bit of a feel for what it was like for the drivers. I'll talk you through the 1946 circuit and hopefully demonstrate it as best I can. We set off from the start line, heading straight east down a straight before coming to a tight left-hander which will take us onto one of the perimeter roads. It's full speed from here with only a slight curve to worry about in the straight before you get to the northern part of the track 
where you'll need to do a left hand turn which immediately becomes a much sharper left hand turn that will bring you out onto the main runway or main straight. From here it's a sprint down to the finish line which sits just before a tight left hand turn which will bring you back onto your start finish line straight. It's all a little bit odd considering the start and finish lines are in different places but hopefully you guys get the idea. Granston Lodge, completed here mate. Thank you very much for watching indeed. I do hope you liked this video. If you did, there is a button specifically for that. And if you wouldn't mind hitting the subscribe button whilst you're there, that would really make my day. Thanks again for watching. I hope you have an absolutely fantastic week. This has been Auto Shenanigans. My name is John and you've been watching Forgotten Racetracks. I shall see you guys next time for another exciting episode. Take care, bye-bye, 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 bye-bye. I've been John. This has been Forgotten Racetracks. I should. I said I've been John. I mean, it's technically right. Right, cut there. We're gonna to have to redo all this, aren't we? My name is John. Ah, oh, fuck's sake. <laughs> I, I know. I was so pleased. I did it, and I was like, oh, I fucked up the next bit. That's right. Keep going. That's right. I got this. I got this. I got it. And it attracted. Some, said subscribers. It's not. It's spectators. Subscribe to the channel, please. Yeah, I've scripted this incorrectly. Oh no, I haven't. I think it's in the wrong order, but I think it's all there. Let me just check.